Hey guys, it's me, the Witch of the Wilderness. This is another video in my Witchcraft and Wicca series, and it is all about cauldrons. So I'm going to talk to you about how to choose your cauldron and set up your cauldron ready for first use, and also demonstrate how to season your cauldron, as well as the various different ways in which you can use your cauldron in your craft. So let's crack on. I love using a cauldron, I do. I think it's because it helps connect me to my craft. And when I do a cauldron spell, I feel like I'm calling on an ancient power from long ago because cauldrons are really useful, versatile tools used in Wicca and in witchcraft. So if you are intrigued about this lovely magical tool, then consider using it in your practice. With a little time and a little patience, using a cauldron can open up new ways of performing spells and experiencing magic in different ways. In Wiccan traditions, the cauldron is a symbol of the creative forces of transformation. The round shape and receptive properties of cauldrons make it sacred to the goddess, and it is very, very logically associated with the element of water, However, given that the heat of a fire is necessary for much of the transformative work of a cauldron, some view it as sharing association with both water and fire. So you will need to choose a cauldron that calls out to you. Cast iron is the most common type of cauldron and they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. It is all about just finding one that is right for you and will fit in with your practice and maybe even on your altar. You can also get brass ones and also copper ones, although they are more expensive and sometimes harder to source. So you can get travel cauldrons like this. And you can also get the more standard size, like the one you will see in my upcoming video soon. And you can get ones that are even larger, which are great for outdoors. So cauldrons are a great addition to any altar, especially for women given that the symbolism of the cauldron and its relation to fertility and the womb and is often a witch's or wiccan's must-have tool. However, some people choose to use oven-proof bowls as a cheaper alternative to cauldrons and that's also fine. So whether your cauldron is new or second-hand, you will need to strip it anyway for any magical residue negativity or leftover psychic energy from those who have handled it in the past. Cast iron picks up psychic residue from the creation of the cauldron. Shipping and handling and people who may handle it before you in the shop or the energies of the previous owners will all be imbued in your cauldron before you use it. So there are several ways to cleanse a cauldron, however I prefer to bury it in soil outside for a few hours dig it back up and let it sit in the rain or soak it in collected rainwater for a few hours. Then I take it inside, ready to prepare it for its first use. So before you use your cauldron, if it is cast iron, then you need to season it. Seasoning a cauldron has two purposes, both of which can be important for magical workings. The first thing that seasoning your cauldron accomplishes is it prevents rust. So if your cauldron is used outdoors or if you use it to hold liquids, then this is crucial. The seasoning process will help you get years and maybe even decades of use from your cast iron cauldron. The second reason for seasoning a cauldron may or may not apply to you. The seasoning creates a natural non-stick surface inside the cauldron. So if you cook with your cauldron or use it to hold hot things such as charcoal discs for incense, then this will help to extend the life of your cauldron and make it a whole lot easier to keep clean. So basically, seasoning your cauldron makes it a lot less likely to rust and ruin as the baked in olive oil helps to add a protective layer onto your cauldron so it lasts longer and stays in better condition. Keep in mind that the following method of seasoning can be used on any cast iron vessel, such as a skillet or a pan and not just your cauldron, so it's actually very useful to know. So in order to season your cauldron, you need to make up a mixture of sea salt and either olive oil and or almond oil in, your, in a bowl. 
and wipe the inside and outside of the cauldron down with the mixture. Rub in the oil to the best of your ability and place your cauldron be uncovered in the oven on a high heat for 90 minutes to a few hours and don't forget the lid of your cauldron needs doing as well if you have a lid and if you are doing the lid too then please place the lid on the rack next to the cauldron if you place it on top of it when it's in the oven then a closed cauldron will just not season as well at all so when the cauldron is seasoned well you need to turn off the oven let it cool and you're all set to use your cauldron Way! So this part of the video is going to go through a number of different ways that you can use your cauldron. So you can burn incense in your cauldron and you can do this in numerous ways. You can burn loose incense herbs with charcoal discs positioned in the middle of your cauldron. Or you could use incense cones which are extremely simple to use with a cauldron as well. You simply set the cone inside your cauldron and light the tip. If you're like me and you burn incense all day, every day, it's a problem. Then burning it in a cauldron also evokes the energy of the Divine Feminine. I like to light a charcoal disc and throw different mixtures on the top depending on what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I will simply place a sage, cinnamon or even Palo Santo right on the smouldering charcoal and I'll just walk around the house with the cauldron when I need to do a hefty energy clearing. That way I'm not constantly having to blow on the sticks or relight them and I can do the whole house in one go because the charcoal tab takes care of it for me. As well as when you have done this burning, your cauldron will be left with quite an ashy mess inside. So this is the perfect time to make your own black salt. Black salts are commonly used for breaking hexes warding off negative energy and creating both psychic and physical boundaries that cannot and shall not be broken. I have a video all about black salt from a few months back. If you wish to know more about it, then check that out. So another use for your cauldron. You can collect moon water. You simply set your cauldron out on a rainy night to gather rainwater. Note what phase the moon is in that night so you know what moon phase energy that water is charged with. Pour the water into a glass mason jar and store it until you need it for a spell or for cleansing your tools or crystals with. I do also have a video on moon water and its uses, so feel free to check that out if you haven't done so already. You could also make cauldron tea. Yes, so this is where you boil herbs or loose tea leaves in your cauldron to create a powerful tea, herbal tea or elixir. So you can add loose herbs into your water and heat up the cauldron. If you're making the tea to drink, then please, please make sure your cauldron is cast iron and that it is 100% totally clean because otherwise you run the risk of ingesting something harmful that was left over from a previous spell or ritual work. If you have a small cauldron, then a tea light candle under your cauldron will do the trick. However, if your cauldron is larger and maybe you want to work outdoors, then dig a hole under your cauldron and build a small fire with sticks and bits of wood. This would be great for preparing ceremonial drinks such as a wassail or herbal teas in a coven or gathering setting during, I don't know, a sabbat or a rite. You can also use your cauldron for scrying purposes, which is a form of divination using water in a dark vessel such as a cauldron. This activates your third eye and you will see your future reflecting back at you in the water. You could also use moon water as well instead of ordinary tap water if you have some. Another thing you can do with a cauldron, buried cauldron spells. So if there's something you need to cleanse, then place it in your cauldron with the lid on and bury it in the earth for a few hours. The cauldron will protect it from the elements while it's submerged whilst allowing the Earth's natural elements to cleanse the object. You could cleanse crystals, runestones, and, well, anything that can fit in there this way. You could also burn bay leaves with wishes written on in your cauldron or things that you wish to manifest into your life as another simple yet really effective way to use your cauldron. So after you've completed any type of spell work, you'll need to get rid of the leftover residue one way or another. 
Every witch does this differently. You can either return your remains back to the earth through either scattering in the wind or burying, or simply just throw the remains away, or use them in black salt if they are viable. However, once you have done this, you'll need to clean your cauldron. There are a few different methods you can use. The easiest one would be to simply cleanse the cauldron with hot salt water. Please don't use soap. You can cleanse your cauldron with a mixture of apple cider vinegar and olive oil as well, just as well as using regular hot water and always towel dry your cauldron immediately after washing it to prevent rusting. Remember, this is a physical cleanse of your cauldron. Spiritually cleansing your cauldron is equally as important especially after spell work because you really don't want any leftover energies or any intent attached to the cauldron for your next spell so for a spiritual cleansing i would suggest using a sage stick or some incense and it's just important to collect your ashes wash and dry your cauldron well and keep it clean season your cauldron as often as you feel you need to depending on how much you use it depending on the usage of my cauldrons and general wear and tear i typically season it once or twice a year to keep it in a good condition and that's everything so that's another video done thank you all for watching if you find my videos useful or informative then subscribe so you don't miss any because that'd be a bummer feel free to share me videos on facebook youtube you name it just if you found it useful let people know let me know in the comments below if you have any questions as well i love answering questions he sharing my knowledge and helping fellow wiccans and witches is exactly what this channel is for so don't feel silly i'm not going to judge anyone who wants to simply get more knowledge on the craft everyone started out knowing nothing and everyone has had to learn the craft their own way. So if there's something that you're struggling on or you don't understand, comment below and I'll try and get back to you. Visit me on Facebook, on Instagram. And if you also, if you have any other like recommendations for like videos and stuff, anything you want to see me cover, then just let me know and i'll try and do it for you so yeah that's everything i think yeah that's everything right i shall see you all in the next video blessed be guys love and light <laughs>